What's up, you goob? Um, are you calling them goobs? Or you, are you calling YouTube? It's a silly way to say YouTube. Okay. We're, you're going to spend the day with Brittany and I. We're doing a couple cool things today. We're going to look at a, I uh, don't know if I can talk with glasses on. Um, oh, here's a, here's a little thing. I always think it's rude to talk to clients or other people with my sunglasses on if they don't have their sunglasses on. So be it clients or anybody really for that matter. Uh, so if I'm talking to a client or somebody and they don't have sunglasses on, I try to, because the eyes tell you a lot, right? Where the eyes are looking and all that junk. So I, you know, I try to make sure that my glasses are off uh, when I'm meeting with a client. Uh, we're gonna go visit a couple job sites. We're gonna stop by the shop, throw some stuff off here at the shop. And uh, we're gonna go to one job that's far away. A job we've completed, but we just want to check it out because we haven't been there in a little bit. We're leaving on vacation here, and, and uh, we want to get Mr. Bo's job before it's over. I haven't even been on site, and they've been on there for three, or three weeks or more. Which blows people's mind, by the way, that I don't oversee jobs more, and I don't... That would drive some people insane, turning their people loose on projects and not having oversight of it. I don't micromanage like that. It's just not my thing. I don't... I just... We don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time. We're running a big business and two or three... Well, I say big business. But we're running a company with five guys in the field and the social media crap and a podcast and all that some jcbs hey you can't see it but look at that jcb skister loader mini excavator thing uh, and we'd have to sacrifice a lot more time with the kids in order for you to be on a thousand percent yeah i mean i could do more yeah but it, i'm not gonna be home in the evenings and so as a business now of 20 that i've been contracting for 20 years i've learned that you have to delegate and you have to let some stuff slide or you know you just have to let your people make mistakes and you got to be willing to pay for it uh to have time with your family so uh, a lot of people brag about how much they work but not a lot of people brag about how much time they spend with their family well we have made the business again we're re-established here over 10 years uh but we've we've made the family a priority which is a luxury we have because we have been in business for 10 years but we're also willing to delegate like we have we're okay with turning our guys over to jobs and letting them manage them and deal with them and the mistakes that may come or whatever so so yeah follow us along and uh, like brian fullerton says uh you can go fast by yourself or you can go far with a team and we're trying to go far with a team and now also too we've got the shop build coming up and that's going to take even more of Brittany and i's time trying to figure that place out and do all that and then a couple other investment ventures so we're doing a lot and uh we're trying to do it with a team here we are at shop just pulling in we've got uh some assets here the skid, skid steers in they've moved those materials i'm glad to see that that flagstone pal's fourteen hundred dollars just sitting there burning up time and effort but so. with the shortage of all the materials right we're kind of having to buy stuff like that and bulk it we know we use a lot yeah well we should have it anyways but now we've just decided to pony up pony up twenty thousand dollars worth of inventory or something i don't even know how Which, much if you're trying to build a shop that makes your bottom line look bad because you pay for all this material yeah you front loaded well. all your stuff on the year yeah you that, explain it to the bank <laughs> uh that's one thing yeah that's true and if you're doing your weekly financial reports you'll know those things so okay that's that here we go here we are at the shop we're gonna offload so we've got some lights here we took some shears home from the guys uh or we took some shears home uh from the shop here flat tire got fixed needs to go back on that trailer so much to do
So what on earth are we doing? Well, the guys dumped this here a while ago. Or actually, I did. Because the truck got left loaded over the weekend. They're not supposed to get left loaded over the weekend. I needed the truck real fast last minute. This one, matter of fact. And uh, so I dumped it right where it sacks. I had to go. Didn't have a loader here to move it. Yada, yada, yada. I was River Rock, uh, like a number, number four-ish, give or take. Um, and we use it, you know, the top dress around certain certain landscape features and things like that. And I wanted to get it put in a super sack to salvage it. Uh, we built our facility. We've got other videos on that where uh, we're uh, talking about building our, our new uh, landscape facility. Uh, we'll have bins. We'll have bulk bins that this stuff will be stored in. And the same with, like, our number nine clean stone here, which is our bedding material we use in place of sand to set pavers on for the bedding course. But it's a clean stone, no fines. Makes a great bedding material. And then we got number 57, which is our base area, base uh, material we use on most projects these days. But I wanted to show you the Toro mud buggy here, and you'll see some other video clips of how we use this thing and how we compare it against, because Toro sent us that thing to promote, I guess, and kind of review and all that kind of stuff. Because we have one of these candy com buggies and the Canicom's got a lot of great features that I like, that I wish the mud buggy had, the Tor mud buggy had. And then it's got, the mud buggy's got features I wish the, the Canicom had. We've got this Toro uh, cultivator thing, which is sweet, by the way. It's a, uh, uh, what do they call it? Conditioner, but it's got a bunch of other add-on things that go onto it that uh, this didn't come with, but I digress. Uh, things we like about the, the Canicom versus the Toro mud buggy, the controls, it's easier, you know, I can hold the camera and run the controls. So they're a little more- That's important. I mean, that's really important, right? But no, I mean, you could be on the phone or just doing whatever. And so these, these controls are a little, and even on the new ones, they're still a little stiff, but that's not that big a deal. Um, but you know, just the traction controls, being as you can one hand it is really, really convenient. And the tub here, oh, good Lord. The tub is more open across the top. So you saw us dumping, that little bit of material into the top of this tub here, which they call it the tub. I, I wish this thing were open just a little bit more so it'd be easier to dump stuff in there. This is for, now I'm presuming this is for rigidity's, rigidity's sake and for splash, because it's specifically a mud buggy. So for hauling concrete, you know, wet concrete. More, um, you know, we could compare specs all day. I don't know, but you know, the- You got a lot of mulch in here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it, the capacity of this tub is as much as that skid steer bucket, like 17. I think it's 17 cubic feet. It's crazy, but this this is this lip is here to keep that mud from splashing when it's real. Say you get a really uh, uh, high slump concrete, in other words, really loose. You know, you do something crazy and this thing sloshes. It keeps that concrete from sloshing all over this buggy, which that Canicom does not. So these are the controls. You can see um, if you're used to the Toro stand-on mower units. I'm, I would bet like the majority of these components go right on that same with this pad and everything. And this thing is way more comfortable to operate than the Canicom because you can lean against this thing. Um, it's not a make or break feature or whatever, but it really is, uh, you know, you've got, but the problem is you can't really one hand it to operate it. And there's just circumstances where the one hand operation is really nice. Now, granted this one's safer, I believe to operate. So if you had crews of guys and you're turning these things loose, it's like that thing you could bump that control and lurch it against the building that is pretty tough to do with this when you've got to uh, you Everything know get this thing into engage. engage yeah now you can one hand it if you know the little trick which is this control this rides with this right so if you you can so if you know you can do this really? then you got one hand yeah so like you take one hand if you're just going straight you can do that i don't think my hand well your hand may not yeah that's true your hand may not be big enough um but otherwise, um, the thing is really comfortable to operate. It's really stable. One thing about this versus the, the Canicom is this thing is way more stable feeling. Uh, the, wheel, the, the wheelbase or the track length is way longer. Now granted, they're a little more narrow. And so I don't know, you know as far as displaced, you know, PSI and stuff like that. The buggy, the Canicom is a little shorter, but wider. And these are longer and a little bit narrower. So you get a narrower footprint. I think I would try, I think I would trade wide tracks <clears throat> for the longer narrow 
but then you probably sacrifice some of that stability. Um, the fuel tank, being able to see the fuel tank is really cool. Uh, it's a little hard to see. It's not quite opaque enough, but you can see the line there now. But if it's full, you can't actually, you gotta really actually look to make sure it's full. So um, this platform folds up, which is nice for transport. If you've got to pack this on a trailer with another machine and the Canny's does too, by the way. But uh, you know, it's still, you know, you can still get up in here and operate it on some, you know, maybe what would normally be, you know, slightly sketchier terrain. Uh, 25 horse gas engine, I think it's 25 horse. No, no issue with power, Kohler Command, matter of fact, power on demand, there is no lack, no lack for power whatsoever. It's, it is plenty strong. My one real gripe is there are hydraulic cooling fans on this thing that blow directly down underneath the machine. And this thing stirs up a god awful amount of dirt or dust when you're mowing or when you're mowing. I'm looking at that fairy ring over there. You see that the half circle yonder there? That's a fairy ring. It's a turf disease. Anyways, um, if you don't know how I, if you haven't seen any of our YouTube or Instagram content or uh, Kid Contractor podcast, yeah, we get off track a little bit sometimes, a lot. Uh, but it blow those cooling fans blow directly down in the dust. If you're on a dusty job site, this thing's got a cloud of dust falling it like Pigpen from Charlie Brown. So, which is an old reference, man. Nobody, nobody knows who that is. That's how old I am, Britt. Uh, so I would love the engineers to fix that and make those fans even put buffers or uh, Diffusers or uh, baffles or something to blow that that wind, you know, even on the bottom So it just shoots it straight back or something uh, Brit fire this thing up and just dump it and swivel it and then you'll see some other b-roll where these things are real I mean, they're, they're handy in so many freaking ways like people ask what should I get one of these first or a mini skid steer loader? You should get a mini skid steer loader first and then augment it with this thing um, So this Make these units without swivel uh if you're a landscape contractor even a concrete contractor don't buy the units that aren't swivel uh i gotta put my glasses on my my eyeballs are dying here um you you gotta have the swivel the swivel is what makes these things right i mean the non-swivel is okay but for the extra couple thousand bucks or whatever it is for a swivel unit because what you can see if you look back in our other french drainage videos and stuff we'll drive right along a trench turn that thing sideways and then just fill that thing with clean stone you know the draining drainable stone not the stuff underneath this stuff i'm talking this that the water flows through well also like when we did earlier like i can position the buckets almost any position exactly yeah for loading down. exactly that's a great point Britt. and so you've got to be sure um that these things swivel and for backfill along along the backside of retaining walls or even just to shake it out or whatever uh the swivel is just like just totally the ticket so we love this thing um, and we love the buggies, all about that buggy life, hashtag buggy life with, an, with a Y, L-Y-F-E. Cool, that's that. So Britt claims that the platform's higher. I wouldn't say a lot, It's, yeah, but it's noteworthy to her. And she's a short person, so I suppose that really does matter. And this, like while you're driving, you can operate this. Right, which... Not, but I guess if you have one hand. Yeah, so that's the purpose of, you know, being one hand to drive. You can still run the dump mechanism and or the swivel, yeah, but which I tell you, that's where they like, beat. Yeah, like that's where they... operate. Yeah, that's You could true. operate all components at once that you have to let go of something and then also you got a foot control though here too so but i'll tell you either either model you're not going to be sorry if you purchase either one i think you should have one period a hundred you have house. to have a buggy for your house <laughs> you know have one for your house and have one for your company but i can't tell you how many people i've talked to now that we've been promoting these things have bought these and say that crew morale is higher which i guarantee you bring those on a job site your crew that's wheelbarrow and stuff is used to wheelbarrowing they're gonna have a change of heart 
even like in the Let's morning, shut the shop up here. Even in the morning and like for cleanup at the end of the day, you can pile all your crap in that thing and drive it back out to the street or wherever your truck is parked and load load and unload everything. Way easier than carrying it three pieces at a time or wheel bearing it around. Thousand percent. But I think it's what Jeremy Slyhart do. They I think they use it more as like a shopping cart than anything else. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, you can uh, take that thing and you, I mean, you'll be blown away the amount of uses you find for that. Hey everybody, welcome to Autumn Landscape YouTube. Mr. Bo and Travis here building an amazing project here. Uh, we're working as a subcontractor on this project here and a really nice backyard patio area here. Uh, lots of drainage considerations here. There's a French drain that runs along the outside of the perimeter there. Uh, do the slope running towards it here. Gas fire pit, uh, we're getting installed here. And I say we, we as in Bo, we shot a bear, paw did kind of deal. But uh, looking, looking real sharp. So gas, it's been plumbed for gas. There we got our gas line in there as you can see. By the way, battery angle grinder, super handy. Uh, but uh, another contractor's finishing out all the landscape work and all this around here. We're setting on our open base. There's going to be a walkway goes out and around. And uh, Bo built up a step there. Or actually, not built up a step, but we had to, instead of piling material against the deck here, we built an independent retaining wall here so that we don't have any material piled against the deck. We don't we don't ever want to do that. So uh, it's all clean stone. <clears throat> all our base is sloped to that French drain and uh laid out so looks really nice lots of site logistics lots of stuff going on we got our porta potty of course which uh saves running and finding a restroom or going in the woods or anything like that or great big compaction equipment and then a uh, ditch which here to do the, the balance of that dirt work and uh scraps and all that stuff needs to go out plywood for uh, access also did a front walkway here which is really pretty uh really beautiful setup here mr bow did again we're working under a company on this so they design it and we install it and this looks amazing uh, the other company is going to be putting in a beautifully elaborate uh softscape all the way around this thing and uh really beautiful project Bo and uh Bo and team doing really well a little bit of extra gravel there a little bit of extra 57 to get things done had to dump it on the street and then bobcat it up the driveway as fast as possible get it off the street but Really looking sharp, so nice job, guys. Really cool. That was uh, the Perez job. It was very nice. Again, we were working under another uh, landscape designer, a landscape company, uh, very well known for cultural work. I would say who it is, but uh, the sharks are always swimming just below the surface. And uh, I don't want anybody trying to slip in and solicit so i gotta keep that one quiet sorry folks that's the real deal the business world's ruthless sometimes but that being said we are heading to and we normally aren't this far apart on our job but actually we've got uh john our stormwater crew he, they're out in western ohio greenville ohio doing a, a catch basin project right now that's two hours from home bo's project's an hour from home um, we're heading over to a project that we uh, had been building all spring, uh, all spring, uh, here for the past uh, three or four weeks, whatever. It's, it's complete with the exception of waiting on some back order materials um, that we made a mistake and didn't foresee being an issue, uh, which is a lesson to everyone these days. Britt's answering DMs, by the way. She'll go through my DMs while we're driving and uh, answer questions she knows, and then if she doesn't know the answer, she asks me uh so if you don't follow us at almond landscape on instagram check that out but anyway so we're driving a long ways back across uh columbus which we rarely like i said we rarely work up in a big city here just did so far and we work local so much um it's uh it's nice and here's one of the reasons i don't like working in the big city is this traffic nonsense we'll pan around to the big city of columbus and by the way the city of columbus does itself a major disservice not managing and maintaining all this overgrowth here in the inter interchanges it really is a shame the city would look so much nicer if those were just they don't have to be manicured turf but if they were just mowed regularly you know semi-annually it would it would create such a better optic like this bridge overpass right here it would be 
such a low cost visual uh, win for the city. And all this overgrowth bull crap here and there. I mean, this is, this is 70 eastbound, Interstate 70. This runs clear, clear up to Colorado, for God's sake. That's an interstate, right? But anyhow, so we really, we really work up in here. By the way, the thing that makes that um, relationship work is, um, is that we're a subcontractor, so they draw up the plans, they deal with all the client interaction, all the stuff. The reason, one of the, the biggest reason I don't work up there is to look at the project, meet with the client, I gotta drive an hour and an hour home and all the interaction. And then to have a second meeting, another hour, and all you know, all that legwork. If there's a problem with the project, I've got to drive an hour to deal with it. Da, 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 da. I don't have that kind of time as the owner, owner, her operator, operations manager is my job. We don't have time for that. Now, if I had a designer on staff, yeah, they'd probably have to run around a little bit more. It would be a big deal. We price in the travel uh, and the, with the windshield time to the job. The client's going to pay for that drive time. We don't eat that. You can't afford to eat that. Um, and uh, here's some cool, the overpass work they're doing here is really cool, by the way. Um, Kokosing here, big company. This bridge building company is so cool. On their website, kokosing.com, I presume. It is the coolest startup story. And I'll do a podcast on this one day at Kid Contractor Podcast. If you don't listen to it or subscribe, check it out. But th this company, I mean, they build interchanges and highways across the state of Ohio and other West Virginia and everywhere employ thousands of people let me show you here started out with just a husband wife team doing uh, like garages and stuff block wall garages and stuff like that and he bought this crazy tool called a uh, for concrete work called a power screen it was a gasoline powered uh, you know screen board essentially for screening off concrete and uh, and it cost so much money. They they got they couldn't get finance from a bank to buy it. They couldn't. Um, they literally got turned by turned down by the bank to buy it. And they end up buying it anyways, just using cash or something like that. And then here they are, you know, a huge you know construction company. You know, 30, 40, 50 years later, whatever. So worth hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue or whatever. Uh, it's just so it's just so funny how the how the wheels turn slow. You know. Um, like ACDC says, uh, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll kind of thing. Right, Britt? So, um, so anyhow, so what makes those jobs so nice is like we don't deal with any of the client interactions. Any issues they deal with, and then they get that information gets fed down to us. And if it's on the plans, cool. If it's not, uh, it's a change order. And that's a really wonderful relationship. One of the reasons we really like that commercial stormwater work too is like, What's on the scope's on the scope, and that's it. And uh, otherwise, design build work that we do in-house, we try desperately to do to do that work within 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes at the most, uh, you know, near the house or near the shop. Uh, we don't like to travel too much for that because just too, all the client interaction work takes too much, too much windshield time. Here we are on our project uh, that was completed about 90%. Uh, let's see here, what, what all? So we've got our uh, conduit here for lighting. We're gonna do our uh, transformer here. This runs out, super perfect. Okay, let me give you the overview here. And there's some other videos I think are gonna exist, but this project is really cool. A lot of great colors in here and themes. Next year, there's gonna be a pool out here with the pool deck run clear around all that. We'll do this out and around. It's gonna be a real showpiece project. It's gonna be awesome. But this one, even as is, is really cool dirty from wind and kids and all that but uh really pretty project all built on the open graded stone just like you saw in our last project and uh we've got this great indiana limestone which we started using as opposed to manufactured steps because it's sawn and it's more uniform in thickness as opposed to the the, the precast stuff uh, this is that Linneo product looks really fantastic travis built this project it's really uh really a great great job uh, beautiful set of steps, by the way. Holy mackerel. Those are just amazing. Um, I'm so happy with those. And then our step down to the lower patio here and our fire pit. Uh, really a beautiful project. Really just a beautiful little project. whole lot of project crammed into just a little bitty space. So, Britt and I hadn't seen it and we wanted to stop and check it out. This is that Linneo product. So you put specific uh, block tabs in there to give it 
And that's what gives it that depth and dimension. We didn't do it on the stairs for elevation issues or concerns. Now we're gonna take this Indiana limestone and it's gonna go across top. I made a slight error, 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 and didn't order enough and it's on back order or something got screwed up. I haven't actually looked at a logistical end on a paper if I didn't order enough or what happened. So now we gotta wait uh, for that limestone to come in. It'll get capped across here, beautiful. The fire pit, uh, Travis did a phenomenal job uh, building this thing out, capping it out. We'll either put stone in the bottom or we'll line it with a, a clay fire brick in the center. We have put pavers in the past and for years and years and years and years, never had issues. Uh, we <laughs> Admission, we tried putting concrete. We, we actually did concrete in these one time, like, you know, uh, like a quick uh, concrete type deal. And client had a fire and the concrete hadn't been fully cured enough yet and the concrete exploded. It was a friend of ours house that we built a patio for, thank goodness, but the concrete literally popped and threw chunks and pieces everywhere. It was crazy. Uh, learned our lesson there. It didn't It didn't cure enough for long. It probably would have been okay if, we, if they'd let it cure longer, get all the moisture out of it, because they literally used it within 48 hours. So of it curing or, you know, being installed, we thought, man, we really had something going there. So you could probably use a refractory mortar and get away with that and do that. I don't know. I would do, do you must do your own research on that. But uh, we've got our, our wiring in here, waiting for our capstones. It uh, enters across here. Uh, then we're gonna do uh, our wire, you know, our, our, our wall lights here. It's gonna be, gonna be perfect. Gonna um, be really cool. So what we tried to do today was to shoot a video of what a daily a day or just spending a day with Brittany and I my camera ran out of card and uh, out of card space or whatever but uh, I had to go and get truck tires rotated which people say well you know why would you spend time well a it's free with the tires they bought but the uh, bigger thing is uh, a car on it there yeah, don't what don't rub your Addison, don't rub your hands on your shirt. You ruin your shirts, baby. Dad life, folks. Right, sis? What kind of dinosaur you got? That's the blue what? That's the blue velociraptor. Blue velociraptor. That thing's nasty looking. So, um, but while my truck tires being rotated, I'm answering emails and DMs. I'm spending that time useful. So when I get time at home, when I get home, I'm not spending time doing that. Uh, and I'm spending time doing more important things like estimates. Uh, all that kind of stuff during the day. And then when we get home, it's family time and all that. Uh, by the way, I got home, had to do some mowing. We're going on vacation tomorrow. So anyways, I went uh, and did that. We had a design consultation. We generally try to, we try to plan our running on an estimate and you know project evaluations on certain days of the week. So we try to only book all our appointments on like a Tuesday and a Thursday if we're really busy. Uh, or only on a Tuesday or whatever. So that the rest of the week is available, not sprinkle them through the week and it blows your whole daggone week up. Um, you spend one day running all over God's green earth, then you're able to focus back on what's going on for us a week or perform actually performing those estimates. So that's our big thing there. Um, so we'll do more of this daily ride along stuff. This is our first time doing it. I'm going to grill some hamburgers. It's time to be home and do home stuff. Uh, since I got home, I, like I said, threw on a long sleeve shirt here. My Canadian tuxedo or a Texas tuxedo here is, uh, my friends there say, which I love my, my pearl snaps. Um, so, um, the few things that remain the same, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> it's a Jason Boland and the Stragglers song, cheap bourbon, whiskey, and Pearl Snap shirts. Um, the two things that stay the same, I think, is that song, or maybe it's three things that stay the same. Anyways, whatever. Uh, folks, have a good one. Thanks. And, uh, we'll do more. If, if you like this daily ride along nonsense, let us know in the comments below. Uh, that's me attempting to be a professional YouTuber, which I don't think I'm ever going to be any good at. So thanks folks. We'll see you.